Hello guys, it's Talia. In T minus two days, we are going to be in IEM Katowice watching the championships of Counter Strike 2. But when it comes to the world of esports, does hardware really matter? Yes, obviously. <laughs> yes, in the sense of if you're comparing a 24 core Intel i9, just a super jacked up PC to like your setup from the 90s, box monitor and bally mouse included. <laughs> in that sense, yes, it does. But I'm talking about realistically in modern day standards, how much does hardware really matter for the pro players? And that's everything that's inside running the PC, CPU, GPU, even the SSD, uh, the monitor, the peripherals even, how much of it makes the difference. Let's take a look. So most esports games like Lee, Dota, and Counter-Strike are CPU oriented. This is because the GPU intensive titles are usually reserved for more big open world adventures where having these gorgeous visuals are kind of one of its key selling points. But in the case of MOBAs and multiplayer FPS, the visuals are usually practical with the emphasis being on real-time combat with multiple players, tasks, objects. So a powerful CPU is definitely the most important aspect and although you don't need a high-grade CPU to play Counter-Strike, <laughs> for professional players when the frame rates makes the difference between winning and losing a match, you are probably going to go for like the tip-toppiest line because even micro stutters can determine the loss of a shot, a point or even the match itself, which leads us to monitors and specifically refresh rate. Most nowadays opt for monitors with a refresh rate of around 360 hertz for the smoothest gameplay, although we're seeing this number climb even higher. I remember a few years ago when 144 hertz was good, now it's climbing up to 500. Wild. Put it this way, it's definitely not the image quality or the views that matter. No one in esports really uses a higher resolution than your standard 1920 by 1080, so more pixels just means less FPS and we don't want that. And for peripherals, this is kind of an interesting one because until recently, pro players always used wired peripherals as wireless always had a slight input lag or some other form of delay. Really not much, literally milliseconds, but when you're playing against the best of the best, it's gonna make a difference. So at high levels, they were basically unusable. That is until the past four to five years where the technology has massively improved with the most popular mice for esports nowadays actually being wireless. The Logitech G Pro, I believe, it looks just super lightweight and basic in that sense. It's not like a World of Warcraft mouse with 20 different macro keys. And I can understand the gain in popularity because you get that full freedom of movement without the cable to tie you down. Previously to combat the wire tangulation in its wired counterparts, people would use a mouse bungee, which is exactly what it sounds like. Essentially bungee cording your mouse cable from a height so it doesn't get tangled, doesn't drag along the desk, doesn't catch on something. Another wire perhaps I'm looking, there's a spot right below the camera where there's about seven wires all congregated into one place. And I notice every time when I'm gaming, I will pull this one. Look, there we go. Now you're free. See, you, you know what you're doing. You do it every time. Why don't I have a wireless one? I don't care about input lag. <laughs> Nowadays, pro players only really bring their peripherals to tournaments with all the other equipment being provided by the organizer. So the players will bring their own mouse, maybe mouse pad, keyboard, and in-ear headphones. Yeah. So you might notice the pros wearing the classic over-ear headphones, like so, as per usual gamer attire, but then with in-ear headphones underneath. And that's actually, wait, let me take this off. That's actually because the over-ear headphones act kind of as noise dampeners. I believe white noise is played through the over-ear headphones to dampen out the noise of the crowd. And more importantly, the noise of the commentators, the noise, the... <laughs> The commentating of the commentators. <laughs> so as the over -ear headphones are more for the rules of the competition and also probably to show off the sponsors, the only headphones that really fit underneath are in-ear headphones for the game audio. Another benefit of this is that people do believe that these in-ear headphones have more precision when it comes to sound imaging. So when it comes to figuring out where the footsteps are coming from and how far away they are, this could make all the difference. And alongside the peripherals, players also bring their own SSD with all settings, both game and computer related. Once set, the administrators will perform a hot swap before the match, swapping the drive in the computer. This ensures that the players always have their settings, which saves time. And in case of suspicion, the disc can also be checked in case of any illegal or unallowed applications. Naughty, naughty. Of course, not all organizers can afford such thorough security and verifications, and players wanting to win huge money might be tempted to cheat. The most famous scandal in Counter-Strike history happened back in 2018 at the Extreme Island Tournament, which is an unofficial Asian championship with the team Optic India. If you know, you know. Specifically, a teammate named Forsaken. So administrators came over to the team in the middle of the match as his teammate next to him was having a problem with the monitor 
technical difficulty and the admin came to sort that out. The match was paused. And while the administrator was there, there was some suspicion of his teammate next to him, either from something that flagged up in his SSD, although I don't know why they would wait until they were in the middle of a match, but probably more likely how he was playing in the game. <laughs> If that doesn't raise suspicion, I don't know what does. And when they minimized the game, they saw another application running. Now, Forsaken, the player, tried to cover this up by renaming the application as word.exe. <laughs> if the paperclip were around today, he would be he would be mighty ashamed. He actually managed to delete the files in the moment that the admin was there. They saw and they obviously weren't very happy about it. And unfortunately for the team who didn't know, they were all eliminated with the player himself receiving a ban of five years. So career forsaken. NCG is pretty extensive for big tournaments. Around a week before the tournament, the players have to send in all files necessary for the game, configs, drivers, that kind of stuff. The admin reviews these for anything suspicious before setting up the PCs. So the players don't set up the PCs and they also don't have access to the internet while on the PCs to download anything. Apparently the PCs can only connect to Counter-Strike servers, which is quite interesting. And they're also set so they can't read USB flash drives. So really like no, no cheating. When it comes to tournaments, it seems like the game is like, it's pretty clean. Really, you could say the best way to excel is to work as a team, have a really good outlook and bring the power. Point is, don't use word.exe. <laughs> All right, that's enough dad jokes for a 29 year old woman. Let me know your thoughts down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Ah, next time I'm going to be, we're going to be in Spodic. See you in Spodic guys. <laughs> Bye.